At the end of the Second World War, the victorious powers implemented their preliminary agreement on an international tribunal for the main Nazi criminals. On November 20, 1945, an international military tribunal began its work in the German city of Nuremberg. The leaders of the Reich were brought before the court. Almost a year later, on October 1, 1946, the verdict of the International Tribunal was announced. Twelve of the 24 convicted were sentenced to death. Among them were Nazi No. 2, Reich's Marshal and head of the Luftwaffe, Hermann Göring, Nazi No. 3, Reich Minister of the Eastern Occupied Territories and one of the leading ideologists of Nazism, Alfred Rosenberg, Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop, head of the main directorate of Reich Security, Himmler's deputy, Ernst Kalterbrunner, Chief of Staff High Command, Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, Chief of Staff of the Wehrmacht Operational Command, Colonel General Alfred Jodl, Governor General of Occupied Poland, Hans Fren, Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, and Minister of the Interior, Wilhelm Fried, the Glider of Franconia, Julius Stryker, Commissioner of the Netherlands and Head of Austria, Arthur Says Inquart and Reich Commissioner for Labor, Fritz Sackel. Adolf Hitler, who committed suicide along with his mistress Eva Braun, was not included on the death list. There were also no Joseph Goebbels, who together with his wife killed six of their children, after which they themselves accepted death. SS Reich's Führer Heinrich Himmler also committed suicide after being detained by two soldiers. Hitler's secretary, Martin Bormann, managed to escape. Therefore, the death sentence was imposed on him in absentia. The defendants were given a four-day deadline to file a petition for clemency. Kalter Brunner did not submit a petition, saying that there was no point in doing so. The rest of the convicts exercised their right. At the same time, Goering, Keitel, and Jodl asked, in case of refusal of pardon, to replace the death penalty by hanging with shooting. On October 9th and 10th, 1945, the Control Council for Germany, which included representatives of the Allied powers, as expected, rejected the defendants' petitions. October 15, 1945, was the last day for the top Nazi criminals. The execution took place in the gym of the Nuremberg prison, where for this purpose three gallows were installed. There were 13 steps leading to the gallows. The lower part of the construction was fenced with boards and covered with black cloth, so that those present would not see the death throes of the condemned. Under each gallows there was a hatch that was opened by pressing a lever. The main executor was a professional hangman, American Army Surgeon John Woods. A seemingly smiling, good-natured man. His assistant was Joseph Malta. In addition to the prison authorities, a doctor and a priest, the following were allowed into the room where the execution took place two correspondents from each of the four Allied countries, a translator, and a military representative. In total, there were about 40 people. A soldier stood near the solitary cell of each prisoner, who had to look through the door window every half-minute, watching the convict. But it did not help. Two hours before the execution, the head of the prison, American Army Colonel Burton Andrews, was informed that the prisoner Goering was showing no signs of life. Somehow, Goering got a capsule with poison. Potassium cyanide saved the Nazi from the gallows. They say that Goering allegedly left a suicide note with the words, Marshals are not hanged. A little over an hour before the execution, the prisoners were offered their last dinner, sausages and potatoes, and pancakes with fruit salad. The execution procedure itself began around 1 a.m., October 16, 1946. The prisoners were given the right to make a final confession. The first on the scaffold, having climbed the last 13 steps, was Joachim Ribbentrop. His last words were, God bless Germany, spare my soul. They put a black cap on his head, and the executioner turned the lever. It must be said that almost all those sentenced behaved relatively calmly, almost, because Julius Stryker threw a tantrum. He was raging, shouting Heil Hitler, screaming and behaving inadequately. The last to be hanged was Arthur Says Inquart. Before his death, he said, I hope that this execution will be the last tragedy of the Second World War, and that what happened will serve as a lesson. Peace and mutual understanding must exist between peoples. I believe in Germany. Woods organized his work well. While his assistants were freeing one corpse from the noose, 
Another convict was already having a noose placed around his neck. And yet there were some incidents. It is unknown and it is unlikely that we will ever find out the truth. Was this done on purpose or by accident? Strong manila ropes were used for execution. However, they turned out to be overweight and when executed, the convicts died not from a fracture of the cervical vertebrae, which usually happens to hanged people, but directly from suffocation. As a result, the Nazi leaders had to suffer before dying. Field Marshal title took the longest to die, more than 20 minutes. Wood's assistants even tied a sandbag to his feet to speed up the process. However, thanks to the good organization and professionalism of the chief executioner John Woods, after 103 minutes, everything was over. At the end of the execution, a stretcher with Goering's corpse was brought and symbolically placed in front of the gallows. Then the ropes on which the criminals were executed along with their clothes were placed in the coffin. The corpses were photographed again. Representatives of the Allies recorded the fact that there were Nazi criminals in the coffins after which the coffins were closed and taken to a car, which took them to the cremation site in the city of Munich. In one of the Munich crematoria, the bodies of Nazi leaders were cremated during the day. Before sending the next coffin into the oven, it was opened and representatives of the Allied countries were convinced that the named person was lying in the coffin, after which the coffin with the body was set on fire. They say that upon returning home to the United States, Woods was offered several thousand dollars for each robe from which the main Nazi were hanged. Woods could very well make a business out of this since it was hard to prove whether the robe was real or not. However, the executioner turned out to be a decent person. To all requests and promises, he answered with dignity that the robe belonged to the hanged man and was going with him to the crematorium, which was true. A bit of a conspiracy story came out with the ashes of the Nazis. According to the official report, the ashes of the Nazi leaders were scattered from the plane to an unknown location. However, according to eyewitnesses in the area of the Isar Canal near the Marine Clausen Bridge, on October 18th, a cordon of American soldiers was set up. Around midnight, a truck drove onto the bridge and unloaded boxes. The contents of the boxes were poured into the waters of the canal. Locals assume that these were the remains of the leaders of Nazi Germany. This is how those who plunged humanity into the abyss of World War II ended their days, and on whose orders the Nazi executioners committed the most cruel crimes. The remaining Nazi leaders were sentenced to various prison terms, and three of the convicted, Halmer Schacht, Franz von Papen, and Hans Fritsche were acquitted by the court. Palmer Schacht was the head of the Central Bank and at the same time the Minister of Economics of the Reich. The entire financial system of Nazi Germany was in his hands. Von Papen was a prominent diplomat during the war, serving as Germany's ambassador to Turkey. He was also spared. Journalist Hans Frische was Goebbels' closest assistant and ardent Nazi propagandist. But he also escaped punishment at Nuremberg. Despite the protests, the judges found the trio to be the least guilty of Nazi crimes. True, they were subsequently tried by ordinary courts, which tried cases of less significant Nazi criminals, and were given short prison sentences. After Nuremberg, there was a whole series of trials of low-ranking Nazis of concentration camp executioners and punitive forces. However, some fairly significant Nazi managed to escape punishment. For example, Bormann. The following also went on the run. Gestapo Chief SS Grappenfuhrer Heinrich Moller, prominent concentration camp organizers SS Oberstrambahnfuhrer Adolf Eichmann, and his comrade in arms Alois Brunner. The head of SD Foreign Intelligence SS Brigadefuhrer Walter Schellenberg escaped. The Allies managed to obtain his extradition. In 1949, he was sentenced to six years in prison. However, already in 1950, he was released due to health reasons. Nazi doctors were also convicted. Of the 23 convicted, seven were sentenced to death, five to life imprisonment, and four to prison terms of 10 to 20 years. Seven were acquitted. It was not possible during his lifetime to get on the trial the executioner, Dr. Mengele. This sadist died of a heart attack in 1979. The bodies of all executed Nazi criminals were treated the same way. After cremation, the ashes were scattered in unknown places.